Okay, so let's continue our conversation about human evolution. So in our second part, what we want to look at is where the hominid and ape line split. And again, the evidence is indicating somewhere between 6 to 10 million years ago, the fossil evidence, the molecular evidence, the geographical or what we call biogeographical evidence, the anatomical, all these lines of evidence are pointing towards about 6 to 10 million years ago this split occurred in our primate ancestor and one direction evolved in what we call the hominid line, the other direction evolved towards the ape line. So the apes we see today, the gorillas, the chimps, etc., they are different than what they were 10 million years ago, just like humans today are different than what our species was 10 million years ago. So that's a perspective really I want to keep driving home is we did not evolve from a chimpanzee. They didn't evolve from us. We share a common ancestor. It wasn't a chimp. It wasn't an ape. So when we're looking at human evolution, there are some fantastic resources out there. There's a hyperlink there for you guys. Hit that. That's going to take you over to the Smithsonian. Let me move this over and expand our screen a bit. The Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History has a fantastic, absolutely fantastic um, site here in which they have some great, great resources for us. Okay, sorry about the jumble in there. I just wanted to expand the screen out so we can see a much bigger picture of the Smithsonian website. So Smithsonian National Museum, National Museum of Natural History, human evolution evidence. Again, lots of really, really fantastic scientific information here. And what it's showing is that here's the general picture perspective. Somewhere six to 10 million years ago, we see this branch occurring here. This line here, we could say, oh, that's what led to chimpanzees, the evolution of that particular group. Over here, we get this particular group. Over here, we get this particular group, and so on and so on, evolving into the various groups. Our line, what we call genus Homo, up here, this is the Homo group. These are all members of genus Homo. And then here's us, Homo sapiens. So look at the timeline. You know, 6 million, 5 million, 4 million, 3, 2, 1, and here's present day. So when we're looking at all these different ancestors on this tree, some of them existed side by side with each other. They were competing for similar resources. They were dealing with similar predators and stressors, etc. But eventually, all of those lines went extinct, except for the hominid line, the genus Homo that evolved eventually into Homo sapiens. So what is really, really exciting and fascinating is that these continue to be added, or new groups continue to be added as we find out more information. We got, wow, here's new fossils, here's new information, here's new species, let's fit them into or see where they fit into the evolutionary tree. But the big key this is definitely one of those big red star moments. The big key, when we find some type of primate-like ancestor, how do we know if it goes this way into hominids? Or how do we know it goes this way and it goes over to the apes? That's a big key I definitely want you guys to remember. I'm going to ask you test questions over this. So give me a second. I want to minimize the screen down, flip over to slides, and then I'm going to show you what key evidence tells us if it goes to this part of the tree here, all of this, or if it needs to go over here to the chimps, bonobos, the other group of apes. Okay, so give me a second to pause this. Okay, so now we should be back into the lecture slides. Again, there's a hyperlink there that'll take you out to the Smithsonian website. I really can't encourage you guys enough Go check it out. Spend 10, 15 minutes just kind of surfing the site, taking a look at the information. 
and see what's out there. What, what do we have as scientific evidence to support human evolution? Okay, so what I mentioned in the, a few minutes ago, what makes it go down the hominid line versus the ape line? The key feature, bipedalism. This means you walk on two legs. People say, well, birds have two legs. Kangaroos have two legs. Absolutely. But primates, hominids, are the only primates that walk on two legs. Gorillas do not walk on two legs. They walk on their knuckles. They use all four. Chimpanzees, two legs. Now, yeah, you'll see a chimp walk on two legs for a little bit, but then it drops back down to its knuckles. You guys ever Googled trunk monkey? It's wrong when they call the chimp a monkey. But those cart or those comics or uh, those commercials, they show a chimp running on two legs. They can do that, but that is not their their normal mode of locomotion. Hominids are bipedal. We walk upright on two legs. So the key features that tell us if you're a hominid ancestor is bipedalism. But how do we determine bipedalism for the fossil record? Let's look at your hip structure. Okay, Hominids, or bipedal organisms, have narrow hips. I'll show you an example in a second here. But hip structure is one way. The big toe is not opposable in a bipedal primate, in a hominid. Our big toe is in line with our other four toes. Take, a, take your shoe off and look at your foot. That big toe lines up. If you look at the foot of a gorilla, the big toe sticks out just like our thumb sticks out. Huge, huge anatomical feature. Okay, another big feature. The position of the foramen magnum in the skull. So the foramen magnum is a hole at the base of your skull. So think about a skeleton at Halloween. If you took the skull off, the head off, the hole in the bottom is dead center in the bottom. That way when the skull sits on top of your, your vertebral column, your neck, it sits upright. If you look at the position of the hole in a chimp or a gorilla or any of the other primates, the hole is not directly underneath, it's further to the back. So it'll go more towards the back of the skull, and that allows the spinal cord and the vertebral column to enter into the skull and attach there at an angle. Instead of straight up and down, it's at an angle. That's why they walk on their knuckles versus standing straight up on two legs. So we got hips, toes, skull, knees. The knees. Look at your knees. They're in line with your hips. When you look straight down, they're in line. If you look at bipedal organisms, bipedal primates, hominids, those knees are in line. If you look at chimps, gorillas, etc., the knees are offset. Again, I'll show you a picture in just a second when we look at the uh, one of the early ancestors of the hominid line. Okay, so there are physical key features that we will use and apply to fossils when we're finding fossils and trying to determine if they're hominid fossils versus ape fossils. Do they go to the chimp evolutionary line or they go to the ape evolutionary line? So we look at the anatomy. It's a huge, huge feature to tell us which side of the evolutionary tree those things go on. So Okay, so let's take a look at just some of the general members of our evolutionary tree. The Smithsonian site has a lot of them out there. We don't have the luxury and the time to spend going over all of them. So I'm going to hit some of the key groups, some of the main ones. Those are the ones I want you guys to think about and focus on. The main focus is 
for you to look at here are ancestors what are key features about those ancestors I'm not going to drill down and ask you to know the dates of their existence and all the little details but what are the big key features of these groups there's gonna be a little asterisk next to the key features that's the important thing for you guys to focus on so, okay so and here's just a few of the members of the hominid family tree if you guys are really interested and you like it take the anthropology course we offer or take a human evolution course and you'll spend a semester going over all of these ancestors and looking at all the little details but one of the early groups we want to talk about one of the big ones showing here's a hominid in the family a member in the family tree of the hominids is this species called Australopithecus afarensis now these are always found in Africa we find no evidence of this species anywhere else on the planet so geographically African time frame about 3.85 to roughly 2.95 million years ago so an early early ancestor now hominids split from the apes six to ten million years ago where are all the ancestors in between go to the Smithsonian site for that the first one I really want you guys to start focusing on and thinking about is this Australopithecus afarensis this is the famous Lucy skeleton or the Lucy species she was one of the earliest fossils discovered showing hominids now from the waist up you'd look and think wow that's a that's an ape but from the waist down hominid so look at the skeletons here's Lucy's hips and her knees and her feet that all represents bipedal here's a chimp wide hips angled position knees sticking out big toe opposable big toe so when we look at Lucy's skeleton we can determine her species was bipedal that's why it's a hominid ancestor and not over in the ape line she's not an ancestor of the chimps she's an ancestor of us because of this bipedal locomotion but again waist up if that's all you saw you think well that's a, that's an ape ancestor that probably gave rise to chimps or something like that but because of the hips and the knees and the feet these are actually footprints that were fossilized in volcanic ash showing bipedal motion walking on two legs it's an adult walking with a young one next to it we know that species is one of our ancestors it is bipedal all right so that species was around for almost a million years approximately and during that time frame it gave rise to other species so genus Australopithecus is believed to have given rise to Australopithecus africanus still in Africa there's some overlap of the time but then afarensis disappears africanus continues to evolve they're around for a little bit over 1.2 million years southern Africa a little bit larger than the afarensis still a bipedal species from afarensis or from africanus we see the evolution of australopithecus robustus so here's our robustus and robustus look at the time frame about 1.8 to about 1.2 million years ago so southern africa another ape big jaws large teeth structure able to crush and grind and tear up a lot of tough fibrous plant material there was another contemporary at the same time as robustus known as Aethiopicus, different part of Africa smaller not as durable tooth structure so all of these guys are running around Africa somewhat overlapping in time frame competing for similar resources trying to survive in this environment and these lines robustus eventually goes extinct africanus goes extinct the Aethiopicus went extinct all these lines went extinct they, they evolved into new things and the original lines went extinct or they just completely disappeared and didn't continue evolution but what is believed to be the case with afarensis is that afarensis 
is thought to also have given rise to the genus Homo. And that's what we'll look at in the next lecture, the origin of genus Homo and Homo sapiens and our ancestors.